What's up guys, Sir All About Music here for the Momentary Lapse of Reason review. And as you can hear, I'm not playing Momentary Lapse of Reason. Why, you might ask? Sir All About Music always plays the music of the album he's reviewing in the background while he does the review. Well, the reason I'm not playing Momentary Lapse of Reason is because I don't own it anymore. Why don't I own it anymore, you might ask? Well, that's because Momentary Lapse of Reason is a complete bore fest. It is quite possibly the most boring, uninteresting album that has ever been recorded. Um, you know, it's not, it's not that it's bad, <laughs> like terrible, it's that there's, there's nothing that anyone can take out of it that's worth anything. It's, uh, it just kind of lays there like a really old dog that's about to die. It's... And that's my review. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But pretty much, honestly, that is the the gist of this album. It is completely devoid of any any kind of creative, interesting ideas at all. It, it's it's devoid. It's empty of anything. Um, there are a couple points on this album where songs sound like they're gonna get good, like the opening riff to Sorrow. That song, when I first heard that, I was like, awesome. Right, we're gonna get a great you know, really epic Pink Floyd song, and then it came in with that cheesy 80s synth pop with with David Gilmore guitar work overlaid on it. Um, Momentary Lapse of Reason is, <laughs> is really bad 80s synth pop with Pink Floyd on top of that, and Pink Floyd meaning David Gilmore's own personal guitar style, his solos, his riffs, his fills, um, but pretty much the, 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 the core, the, the cores of these songs, the core center of these songs, the focal point of these songs, are nothing like Pink Floyd. They have nothing to do with the Pink Floyd sound. And if I had to pick anything that they had to do with, they would be, you know, 80s, really bad 80s synth pop. And that is what Momentary Lapse of Reason is. It is a... It's a pop album. It is not, or it was meant to be a pop album, I think. Um, it's not really all that experimental. Uh, it's not all that catchy, and you know, it's it's like an utter flop of an album for me. It did okay. It's re you know, it was received fairly well upon its release, and you know, everybody loves the song "Learning to Fly" for some reason that I just can't comprehend, but. As I've said before in this review, and really this is all I have to say about Momentary Lapse of Reason, it bores me. I cannot get through, you know, a minute and a half of any song without just, just feeling like, oh my god, why am I listening to this crap? It is, it, it, it has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Um, none. None. But it is not as bad as Zeitgeist. I would much rather listen to Momentary Lapse of Reason than zeitgeist any day and really you know i uh, with the whole floor the whole floyd feud between waters and gilmore it gets really really hard sometimes to really pinpoint who wrote what who owns what where the creative control is at this at this this point in time but honestly, um, even though I hate to admit this because I think Roger Waters is a total self-centered douchebag, um, he was the, the force behind Floyd for a long period of time. And even though it is, I am of the opinion that Gilmore had a very a, a majority of the hand in writing um, Animals, not so much The Wall, but Animals, and that was a good album, I think it was Roger Waters being there and having that little bit of input that makes the difference between Animals, which is a good album, and has Roger Waters on it, and Momentary Lapse of Reason, which is a bad album and doesn't have Roger Waters on it. I do not want to contribute the entire shifting of style, the entire failure, utter failure that Momentary Lapse of Reason is simply to the fact that Roger Waters isn't there, because that's not fair. Roger Waters was not the entire band. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, you know, but I think his, his little input, his little spark, his little twist on, you know, whatever the band brought is a major factor in the Pink Floyd sound and always has been 
Um, and that's really why Momentary Laughs of Reason ends up being the utter board fest that it is. Uh, it, in, it just, there is nothing interesting about this album at all. Not, not a damn thing. And, uh, that's really all I gotta say. I can't, I can't really talk about this album because I have no redeeming qualities for it at all. Uh, originality? Like, who cares? <laughs> It's, you know, r really the originality really isn't all that good because there's such this this overbearing 80s synth pop style sound to it. Um, so, but really, I, I, I don't care. Um, how much do I like it? I don't care. I, I, I couldn't, I honestly could not give a shit. I don't. Um, the production is sterile. It is... It's not clean. It's sterile. You could like it, the, the production doesn't lend anything to the music, and if if anything, it just makes it sound more boring. The you know part part of an album is 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 its production, and production can do a lot towards making an album sound a certain way or make it more interesting. And uh, yeah, it's like they just went Ugh. and they did bring on Ezrin, who produced the Wall and who I think is a shitty producer as far he just he has a tendency to make things sound very very polished very very clean and he ended up making momentary lives or even sound sterile so production who cares and flow what flow well it has a flow but the flow is just so monotonous and unchanging that it you start snoring you fall asleep so momentary lapse of reason three. A three. That's what it gets from me. So, leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you guys thought. So, all about music. I'll see you later.